So hi everyone, I'm Ed Agmi Cook. I'm a research associate working at the University of Glasgow. And today I'm just going to talk to you about a shiny app that I've been working on uh, with my colleague, Joel Pick from the University of Edinburgh. And as you can see on the screen here, it's shiny digitized. And this is really a graphical user interface or a shiny app um, overlay for the fantastic meta digitize uh, app that um, uh, package that came out in 2019. And essentially what this does is it provides a really sort of intuitive and um, easy to follow graphical user interface for people to go through the entire process of data extraction. So importing the file itself, the image file, and then going through each of the steps from calibrating axes to uh, extracting individual data points. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through that in a second. And this is uh, just the GitHub page. So you can see the address up here. Uh, this is the in development branch um, because we're just working on a couple uh, of additional features. Uh, and it's quite simple. So you can just install via this um, uh, code here. So using the DevTools package and install GitHub. And then essentially you load the library and then You've got two different options and I'll show this um, interactively. Uh, I'll show a demonstration of this in a second, but essentially you either just um, provide a directory of the folder, which you want to actually, uh, which contain the images that you want to extract, or you simply just call the function itself and that will open up the shiny window. And then you can um, navigate to it through the app itself. Um, and really, it, it should be stressed that this is building upon all the um, inner workings of the meta digitized package, which was released in 2019. And if you are interested in 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 that package, um, then you should really check out this paper uh, by Picatel, which was released in um, 2018, 2019. Um, and that's what this package is really building upon. So. I'm now just going to go through a interactive demo of the Shiny app. <clears throat> and for those interested, this is using R version 4.2.2. And I'm obviously using Shiny um, uh, R Studio for this. Um, and I've already gone ahead and installed the in development version of Shiny Digitize. And obviously, um, we're hoping to merge this with the main branch and then um, in the end, uh, put it on CRAN. Um, and it's using the DevTools install GitHub function. So what you can do is you can load the Shiny digitize um, package, and then you've got a couple of options. So you can either present um, the directory folder uh, where all the images are located um, itself. So for instance, there is a folder on my desktop called Simfigs, which has got a whole load of images that I want to um, get data out of and use the Shiny digitize app to extract them extract the data from these images. Or if I'm not entirely certain about the folder path, I can simply leave this blank. Um, and when you do it, um, I'm using an external browser. So this will pop up with a uh, in my uh, web browser. And you get presented with a, a, um, a window uh, modal dialog box like this, showing the shiny digitized logo. And essentially what you do is you're selecting an image file from within the folder of images. So what I want to do is I want to go to desktop, go to simfigs, and then essentially click on uh, one of them. So scatterplot one. Um, and then you get presented with something that looks a bit like this. So you can either go into review mode or extract mode. And review mode is so that you can look through all the stuff that you've previously extracted. Um, and we'll come onto that in a little bit. Or for the purpose of this, we're going to go to extract mode. And then you have an option here where you have, um, you can go through all of them or just the unfinished ones. So we're able to have a history of the ones that um, you've already extracted from. So then um, you could just solely finish uh, off a, um, an image folder that you might have temporarily started and, and then come back to. Or you can specify, for instance, a, um, a specific graph here. But for instance, uh, for this, we're just going to go with all. Um, so then we can get extracting. And then what you're given is something that looks like this. Um, it normally doesn't take that long to load. Um, and you've got quite a lot of options here. So 
Along the top here, you've got the logo once again. And if you click this, it comes up with some further information. So uh, we released an, recently released a package that was introducing this um, uh, and as well as some other tips for reproducibility. Then there's also the metadata ties uh, paper that all the internal functions are based upon. Um, you also have an ability to click between review and extract, and that will come into play later on when you've already done your extraction. And then later on, you can change the point size. Uh, so, you, you know, for instance, if you want them to, to be uh, smaller or larger, you can change the group name and then you can zoom. So in order to zoom, say, for instance, you wanted to zoom in on where um, how close these points were, you drag a box here and you click zoom and then it will uh, zoom in on wh whatever you've created a brush over to so get back. You just click it again and then it will uh, revert to how it is. So let's try and do this one. So you can choose a plot type here and there are currently five different types of plots that you can extract from uh, using the uh, metadigitize, uh, internal metadigitize function. So for this one, we're going to click scatter plot um, and it will come up with a little um, tick saying that you've done it correctly. You click next step and then orientate figure. So um, in these cases, there are some times when, for instance, uh, you might have taken a screenshot and maybe it's not perfect. So you can either flip and this will you know, flip it for you or you can rotate. And when you do that, you can do a whole load of fun rotations and it will remember what you've done. Um, but for this, we're fine. It's perfectly straight and, um, and aligned properly. Um, so then we click next and then we go into calibrate. So we click this and essentially it will come up with um, a um, sort of small diagram about which order that you should click them in. So for the purposes of this, we're going to click this. And so you double click to get the points up. So six and nine and then 1.5 and four. Uh, and then you can fill in the Y variable. So that in this can, case, it's a uh, root length. And then the X variable, uh, sepal length. And for those that have already, um, oh, I spelled that wrong, but that's fine because it's quite easy to change it. Um, for those that have used metadata types, this should be very, very familiar. Um, one of the things you can do is here, you can adjust things uh, on the fly. So you can adjust that just quite simply, and it will just do it as soon as possible. You can click these, but right now it doesn't really have an impact. Um, and then what you need to do is, so maybe, okay, so the, in this case, the axis limit is, is uh, the axis text is too big. So I'm now going to reduce it so I can actually see what's happening. So this it goes from six to nine and the, the, the numbers will appear quite quickly on, on the graph. And then this goes from 1.5 uh, to 4.5 and then click next. And that's it calibrated. And then what you want to do here is you're now going to extract the data. Um, so what you want to do is you add a group and this will come up with a, a group name, a, a box that you can drag. Um, so for instance, this is called on this graph control and treatment. So I'm going to write in control. Um, I currently don't know the sample size, but this isn't always needed. Um, and then for this, for this one, I'm going to go with a square and it's going to be blue. Um, so now it comes up in the box here. The shape is given numerically here. So this is a square and the color is blue. So then I click on the group that I want to start clicking on and I can start clicking points. So for this case, I'm going to do controls. So that's the gray. So you do one, two. I'm not going to do all of them here, um, but I'm going to do as many as possible, but not all of them because we don't have loads of time. Uh, so, okay, fine. That's That, that looks good. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm now going to add another group. So for instance, let's do treatment. Uh, the sample size, again, not really needed. I'm now going to do circle and orange. Um, so then that appears down here as well. So then you can click points again. And then you can do that. And the points will appear. And you can obviously adjust this at any point that you want. But maybe you know, okay, actually, I'm only really interested in the control treatment. So then you can just click delete. And that will just get rid of anything that you've done. But for now, you can then click next step. And then you can um, enter in any comments. Um, so for instance, 
you could write um, uh, something about the control versus uh, treatment graph. And then you can click continue. And then what will happen is it will come up with the next one. So in this case, it's another scatter plot. But as you can see, it's come up iteratively with so now we're on the second one. So then what you could do is you can then click on review mode. And obviously you've not done anything here, so you can't really see anything, but we could go previously and have a look at the extraction that we've done. Um, and we can also click download extraction figure. And what this will do, as you can, as you can see here, is it will um, create an image record of the scatter plot with uh, complete with the extraction data here. It's not necessary uh, for reproducibility, but it's quite a, a nice sort of touch that you can uh, add on. Um, uh, so now one of the most important things that Shine Digitize and Meta Digitize actually produces is what happens after you've done the data extraction. So I'm going to, in the in the folder of figures that um, we've simulated, um, you have two sort of important files. So obviously you've got the extracted data, which is obviously the process data. Now, if you're interested in the raw value, say the raw um, extracted data points that I was showing on the screen, you can then access that within R. But essentially, if you finished it, you get a, a process data file like this, which, for instance, gives you the mean standard deviation, the number of points, uh, and a whole host of uh, added uh, information. And this obviously will differ depending on what plot type you use. But one of the most important things that it does actually produce is a CalDuck file. And whilst you won't be able to actually use it without, um, you won't actually be able to look inside the file without actually using Meta Digitize or Shiny Digitize, essentially what it is is, is a uh, historical record of the data extraction um, that, uh, that you've already done. So essentially what happens is uh, anyone, if I upload this scatterplot1 CalDuck file along with the scatterplot, anyone can look at the um, data extraction that I've conducted um, to see how accurate and how reliable it is to essentially try and recreate what I um, what I extracted myself. Um, and when you go back to Shiny Digitize and open up, um, you can look at the finished files that you've already done. And that is using the CalDuck file to essentially bring in the historical um, historical historical data extraction record so you can actually look. So not only is Shine Digitize and Meta Digitize a data extraction tool, they can also be useful at looking at how other people have done their data extraction. And it's all revolving around the use of this um, CalDuck file. And that's the paper that I show that was about uh, Shiny Digitize is really um, showing um, the, the benefits of providing a historical record or a CalDuck file um, which are readily produced from these data extraction packages uh, alongside the images that you've used. And this will really help with uh, reproducibility. And with that, I, I just want to say thank you very much. Um, and uh, this should be um, produced into a main branch in the not too distant future. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll be on CRAN in also not too, not too distant future, but obviously I'll keep everyone updated. Um, thank you very much. Thanks.